Please welcome our next presenter. He's an Emmy and Tony Award winning actor, Lawrence Fishburne. Hey. Thank you. Hi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Lawrence Fishburne. And I consider myself to be extremely fortunate because I can call myself LeVar Burton's friend. Like many of you, I was first introduced to LeVar in the 1970s. There was a little mini-series called Roots. And he played this character called Kunta Kinte, which made him an icon overnight. But I didn't get to meet LeVar until years later, sometime in the 1990s. I happened to be in New York. I was doing some theater, and I heard through the grapevine that LeVar Burton was looking for me. And I thought, oh, no, what did I do? What have I done? What have I said? Um, after a few misses, near misses, we found each other. We became fast friends, and we have been friends ever since. LeVar, I love you. I am so happy to be here tonight to present you with this award. I'd like to tell all of you a little story about LeVar, uh, something that really kind of impressed me. About a decade, maybe over a decade ago, LeVar invited me to his home. He and his wife, Stephanie, welcomed me into their home, really beautiful, Spanish adobe style, richly appointed, <laughs> very warm, everything that you would expect. Um, but most impressive was LeVar's office. It was clearly the office of a professor, um, a man of letters, a teacher, an educator, a thinker, a dreamer. The other thing that was so impressive was the fireplace. On the mantel above the fireplace, there were no less than 14 Emmy Awards. <laughs> So I turned to LeVar and I said, dude, what are those for? And he said, oh, that's for my work on reading Rainbow. And then he said the most impressive thing, which was, that's my real job. So when you go to LeVar Burton's website, there's a quote, it shows up in big letters. It says, I have dedicated my life to the power of storytelling, whether I'm acting, directing, writing, or podcasting. I believe that sharing stories is what I was born to do, that storytelling is what brings us all together. It is this dedication, this steadfast belief that brings LeVar Burton here this evening. It is, of course, a big deal to win a Lifetime Achievement Award for anything, really. But to be the very first to win a Lifetime Achievement Award is to be a trailblazer. LeVar Burton has been blazing trails his entire life. LeVardis Robert Martin Burton Jr. was born on February 16, 1957. He was raised by a single mother in the city of San Francisco. We all know the statistics about boys being raised by their mothers, single mothers, black boys in particular. Lovardis had a different idea about that statistic, so we'll forget that. At the age of 19, as an undergraduate at the University of Southern California, he was cast in the role that would change not only his life, but the course of television history. Of course, starring as Kunta Kinte in the 1977 miniseries Roots. Yes, yes. That performance not only made him an overnight icon, it earned him an Emmy nomination 
and brought him into the homes of approximately 130 million viewers. That is an astonishing record-breaking number, even by today's standards. But it was in the afterglow of the success of Roots that LeVar really spread his wings, and he took on the persona that has taught literally generations of children to read. Now think about that for a minute. The man has taught generation after generation after generation of children to read. I'm talking, of course, about his real job, <laughs> Reading Rainbow, which he executive produced and hosted from 1983 until 2006. That is nearly 25 years, a quarter of a century of exploring books, literacy, modeling reading behaviors that have shaped the very fundamentals of literacy education in the United States. As I said, a thinker, a dreamer, a man of letters, a professor. Reading Rainbow was also the third most successful program on PBS after Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. That's serious work. And while immersed in the world of Reading Rainbow, LeVar was also making waves as one of the stars of one of the most popular franchises of all time as Commander Gordy LaForge in Star Trek The Next Generation. He went on to direct more episodes than any other Star Trek alum, all the while carrying the torch of awakening children to the magic of reading. And with the end of Reading Rainbow, LeVar has continued his literacy journey through his podcast show, LeVar Burton Reads, his Skyberry app, which brings the Reading Rainbow concepts to the tablet-based generations. And through his social media accounts, which draw attention to things like banned books. In fact, his social media accounts are so popular with the millennials who grew up with him that their campaign to get him to host Jeopardy resulted in the pop culture zeitgeist moment of 2021. <laughs> and today, he carries that spirit of children's television with him as he pursues his goals to introduce the fundamentals of reading Rainbow to every single elementary school in our country. It's a worthy goal, one that was started by a visionary who understands the reach, the impact, and the significance of children's television. Take a look. You know, LeVar is one of those people who's made it his life's work to make sure that children around the country and around the world have access to learning and that they're enthusiastic about it. And he makes it fun to do. So it's an honor and a pleasure to be able to see this award go to LeVar Burton. Hey, LeVar, that's for you. Mwah. Before I identified as an actor, I was studying for the priesthood. So I grew up with the idea that one's life should involve service. My mom was an English teacher. Before she became a social worker, she was an English teacher. And I know that my life has been immeasurably enhanced by my love of the written word. I was a theater actor, and the Monday after we closed Oklahoma, I had this meeting at ABC, and he said, pack your bags, kid, you're going to Savannah. Roots taught me about the power of the meaning of television. We want to create a television show about reading. And of course, one of the things that we needed to find was a host. Our associate producer said, okay, hey, LeVar Burton. And I said, Lynn, oh, Lynn, he's such a big star. When I first heard the, the, the pitch, the idea for reading Rainbow, I thought, what a great idea. Why not try Jumanji? Being nine years old, having a host like LeVar Burton, it was even more of an invitation of like, ah, I want to be on this show. Throughout your life, you'll discover your own dreams. And as you reach for them, some people may try to discourage you, but don't you let them. I think that LeVar is really good at connecting with kids. He knew how to look down the lens and make you feel what he was saying. It 
hurts when someone you love dies. I know. I've been through it. He wasn't talking down to you. He was talking as like, let's have this conversation. Let me show you some of these things that might interest you. I did everything they asked. <laughs> I mean, everything. He's really good at most of the things he tried. Reading in the books is wonderful, but I think the impact that LeVar had on the audience over years of being there and being who he was, these are his children. We knew LeVar loved us. We knew. For the kids like me watching LeVar, for those of us who looked like me, it felt like, yo, this is a dude I know. We're him too. So now what? Star Trek was, it was the first time in a long time that I had wanted something as much as I had wanted Punta. I knew I couldn't pass up the opportunity. Hi, welcome to the Starship Enterprise from the television show Star Trek The Next Generation. Now, you might have seen me here before on the bridge as Lieutenant Geordi LaForge, the ship's navigator. Star Trek was obvious in, in the different approach they took to diversity. Prior to Star Trek, there were no black people in space. You know, there's something else that can help you explore the universe. Books. But you don't have to take my word for it. And the Emmy goes to... Reading Rainbow! Reading, Reading Rainbow. Rainbow! Reading Rainbow! I can be anything Take a look It's in a book A Reading Rainbow All television is education. The question is, what are we teaching? LeVar, congratulations for this well-deserved Lifetime Achievement Award. We are so excited to celebrate your passion for serving America's children. You never missed a day, you never forgot a line, and in 20 years you brought kindness, intelligence, and commitment to your audience. Thank you. And thanks to your mom, Irma Jean, for inspiring you to shape a generation of readers, enriching their lives, and changing our world for the better. Hey, LeVar, congratulations on the well-deserved Lifetime Achievement Award. As friends and colleagues at Reading Rainbow for 26 years, I thank you. And again, LeVar, congratulations from my heart. Hey, this is Mayim Bialik. As someone who grew up inspired by LeVar Burton, it is so wonderful to see this incredible achievement, so well-deserved and just could not be happier for you. Thank you for everything that you have done for television, for children, for literacy, just for being you. Congratulations. When we wrote that song, we had no idea, LeVar, that it would be following you around for the next 40 years. However, when you think about it, that song was about empowering children to read. And those lyrics, I can go anywhere, I can be anything. Well, you, my friend, have gone everywhere and have done everything that a human being could do to promote children's literacy and reading. And for that, we are so excited that you're receiving this well-deserved Lifetime Achievement Award. You take care, my friend. Hey, yo, this message goes out to MC LeVar B, Mr. LeVar Burton. Congratulations. This award going to you is very well-deserved. You're an icon. You're a legend. You're an innovator. You're a pioneer. You're a leader and you're an educator. And thank you for inviting Run DMC and Jam Master J to play, to rock the rhymes on that special, classic, iconic episode of Reading Rainbow. Salute to you and all you do. We love you. Keep up the great works. My dear LeVar, 
Congratulations. A Lifetime Achievement Award. You should have got it years ago. What a life you have had. And I'm proud to be your friend and your colleague. Congratulations. Butterfly in the sky, I can go twice as high. Take a look, it's in a book, a reading rainbow. I can go anywhere. It is my honor tonight to be here with you to present you with the Children's and Family Emmy Lifetime Achievement Award. My dear friend, and brother, Lovardis Burton. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you all so very much. Um, thank you, Lawrence. You know, I wanted Lawrence to be here tonight to present this to me, not only because he's one of the best actors I know and a legend in this business, but Lawrence's roots run deep in children's TV. Cowboy Curtis on Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> You're the man, Fish. You're the man. Ah. Well, it is good to be Kunta tonight. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is amazing and remarkable that um, that I could come from a family for whom it would have been illegal for me to read just two, three generations ago. A deed punishable by whipping, definitely, maybe even death. And to become a literacy advocate and an acknowledged champion of children's literacy in this country, only in America, y'all. Only in America. You don't get one of these without uh, a lot of help along the way. Um, many of the people you saw in that clip, Larry Lancet, Cecily Truitt, Twyla Liggett, um, all of our producers, Jill Gluckson, um, Ronnie, uh, Kathy Kinzer, uh, Robin Fogelman, our directors, Dean Pariseau, Ed Wiseman, Orly Berger, um, so many people, and my family. My mother, Irma Jean, who was the reason. I love reading so much. My elder sister, Letitia, who is here tonight, who taught me how to read. <laughs> my daughter, Mika, is here. My mother-in-law, Donna. My niece, Alexa. My friends and family from LeVar Burton Entertainment are here. This is the vessel that we have created to carry the stories that I intend to tell for this next chapter of my life. But there's no one in this room or on this planet more important to me than Stephanie Cozart Burton, my wife. You taught me what love looks like, smells like, tastes like, and sounds like I'm the luckiest man in the world. I want to thank my storytelling mentors, Alex Haley, who taught me that having an authentic voice as a storyteller is the most important thing. Gene Roddenberry, who taught me that all of our heroes are human. And Fred Rogers, who was just a saint who gave me permission, like he did, to use this medium as a pulpit for that which I believe. I thank the Academy for this. I thank everyone who's ever contributed to my being here in this now moment, accepting this award. <sighs> I appreciate y'all. Yeah.